S S S postulate, which um S S S stands for side side side, referring to side of triangles. And then what the S S S postulate tells us is that if one triangle has three corresponding congruent sides to another triangle, then those triangles are in fact congruent. And what that looks like in practice is well, segment AB is congruent to segment DE. Segment BC is congruent to segment EF, and finally, segment AC is congruent to segment DF, which, using the SSS postulate, tells us that triangle ABC is in fact congruent to triangle DEF. SAS postulate, SAS stands for side angle side, and um, what the SAS postulate tells us is that two triangles can be proven congruent if they um, share a side, an included angle, and another side. And what that looks like in practice is segment AB is congruent to segment DE, angle A is congruent to angle B, segment AC is congruent to segment DF. And one very important thing with the side angle side postulate, SAS, is that this angle must be included. And what that means is that the two rays that form the angle must come directly after it, sort of, as demonstrated here. So, if we have a side, an angle included, another side, and then we have a congruent side, congruent angle, another congruent side, we can say that triangle ABC is in fact congruent to triangle DEF using the SAS postulate. ASA postulate. ASA stands for angle side angle. And then what this postulate does is it says, all right, if we have a triangle with an angle, an included side, and another angle, and then we have another triangle with an angle, an included side, and an angle, then those triangles via ASA can be proven congruent. Now, an important thing to note when using ASA is that this side must be included. What that means is that it is smushed between two angles uh, you know, as demonstrated here. So, once again, ASA postulate. All right, angle A is congruent to angle D. Segment AB is congruent to segment DE, and angle B is congruent to angle E. All this information using ASA tells us that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. AAS, it's important to note, it's a theorem, not a postulate. Um, AAS stands for angle, angle, side. And then um, what this looks like is if one triangle has an angle, an angle, and a non-included side. Another triangle has a congruent angle, angle, and non-included side. And those triangles, using AAS, can be proven congruent. So, what exactly is a non-included side? Well, an included side is when it's between the two angles. This one is not between the two angles. So, let's just run this through. Angle B is congruent to angle E. Angle C is congruent to angle F and segment AC is congruent to segment DF. With all this information, using AAS, we can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DE. Okay, <clears throat> HL theorem, once again, like AAS, this is a theorem. And what HL stands for is hypotenuse leg. Of course, hypotenuse referring to right triangle. As you guessed, HL can only be used when talking about a right triangle. And what HL states, is that if the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse of two triangles match, and a corresponding leg matches, and of course there's a right angle, that of course is congruent, then said triangles are congruent. That's pretty much all you need to know. So um, using HO, we can say, all right, these are right triangles, as so by the right angles. These legs correspond and are congruent, and hypotenuse, you know, segment BC, and the hypotenuse here, segment EF, are congruent, so using all that and using the HL theorem, we can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. C, P, C, T, C. Which means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And uh, this is a very useful thing to know because let's say, for example, triangle ABC and triangle DAF are proved congruent by the SSS postulate, as you can see, all corresponding sides are congruent. So, if we know that ABC is congruent to DEF, triangles of course, 
Then we know that A is congruent to D, B is congruent to E, and C is congruent to F because of CP, CTC.